in diploma you can you may have the luxury of emotion but as someone who's dealt with india's policies towards afghanistan for over a quarter of a century I, well i've dealt with them for a long time i've been retired for uh, for the last 10 years but i've looked at these issues and i've had interests in india's policies towards afghanistan i don't have the luxury of emotion or of choosing the people i engage with that luxury is not available to me just to listen it may be available to journalists it may be available to professors it is not available to those who decide and india's security issues and india's interests okay now having said that let me tell you that the moment we decided to engage with the taliban and the moment in our mission in doha the ambassador met with abbas tanakzai who will now be a deputy foreign minister that engagement process began yeah. and that i'm sure that the uh, that the highest authorities in india would be aware of what the taliban are yeah. so it's all yeah. right to say sirajuddin is this. i'm not saying engage sirajuddin but you've got to engage with the representatives of the taliban unless one last point unless you are willing to allow pakistan and china to ha to have a full play on your western neighborhood and abandon your western neighborhood to interests that are contrary to yours that okay. is the harsh reality all right let's get professor amita matu and amita you and i have come in uh, for a swipe from ambassador kaju which i am willing to take on the chin because i am still arguing that we gain nothing i take ambassador kaju's point that we can't be emotional that there is a certain amount of pragmatic uh, malleability that is needed uh, in the craft of diplomacy but i saw your tweet and you said that those who had argued in favor of engagement with the taliban should be given a one way ticket to kabul uh, may i ask you with no disrespect to ambassador kaju uh, are you are you including ambassador kaju in the list of those that you are going to recommend a one way ticket to kabul for i mean i would have but because he is a fellow kashmiri i'll uh, not uh... Oh, come be, along, I mean, I'll, let's not I'll go be, on that line. I'll, I'll be a little let, favorable. Let's not go on, on, on that track. Uh, no, I did uh, not interrupt you. You are willing you, to sir, sit with, uh, with Kashmiri separatists who are totally against I, I, us. Sir, but I did not interrupt you. Who have you, indulged in violence. I, I, I did not interrupt you, sir. Okay, okay, Ambassador Kajju. One second. Okay, okay Ambassador Kajju, we agreed. We agreed. We would not get emotional. We would agree. We agreed. No, no, I'm not emotional. Okay. But I, 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 I just see the dichotomies and these. No, approaches. no, no. First of all, it's a very, very sad day when someone who represented India in Indian diplomacy for forty years and he's now retired and has the luxury of saying what he wants to say, but that he says that we should engage with a regime which is a fascist terror regime. He would have been sitting in London and advising Chamberlain to do business with Hitler. He so would have been. Along, uh, let, let, uh, one if you are being personal, Mr. then I'll be more personal. Me, I didn't interrupt you. Uh, I didn't interrupt you. Not sir. acceptable. I did not interrupt you. Either you let but me. But I continue. was not personal. Okay. I, let's, I said let's, let's, it's not let's personal. Let's it's calm down. Not, let's, you began yeah. by saying that you have that unlike academics and journalists, you have actually served the country, so you are in a privileged position. if you are going to use that privilege to do business with the taliban and suggest that india should somehow engage with the taliban i am in my right to tell you that you are a okay. modern day chamberlain kind of figure figure it doesn't isn't matter that, isn't, the, isn't that isn't that a very personal remark amitabh mathu you are questioning ambassador kaju's integrity for a difference of opinion on a policy that has the world confused why would you make this personal uh, comment instead of arguing on i said it a appeasement it's a appeasement of who appeasement of yes, appeasement of the taliban now now let me come in here no no i will argument let him just make his argument i promise yeah, to come no, to you right after that yeah, I first of all it's yeah. it's no one's business that it is that if there for tactical reasons you might want to have do a certain amount of business but to in any way engage in a form it's not we are not quibbling with words about recognition engagement lends legitimacy i unfortunately have also seen the fact that the hakani network sirajuddin and company 
mounted a 2008 attack on the Indian embassy in which one of my dearest friends from JNU, who was an in Indian diplomat there, Venkatesh Rao, was uh, killed. And the brigadier of the Indian army was killed. Yes, it is personal for me in many ways because I've seen what has happened. I've seen the cost of what doing business with the Taliban has meant in the past in terms of releasing Masood Azhar, Bushlak, Latram. And again, it's personal because Mr. Kachu was joint secretary there and went with Jaswan Singh during that mission. It is personal in many ways, Barkha, because it hurts me. I'm a Kashmiri and I've seen the consequences of doing business with these people. And anyone who gives me the idea that Indian statecraft has in any way succeeded in de dealing with Afghanistan or Pakistan in the last 30 years, please give me a breather. Or I think that any engagement with the Taliban, no matter what the Russians and the Chinese do, will lend legitimacy. And more importantly, what they represent almost everything that is goes against the grain of the idea of India. Remember, Prime Minister, look, let's go back into history. Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain had a choice when he went, came back from uh, did, whether to uh, oppose, confront Hitler, because Hitler was on the rise and uh, he was conquering parts of it. So Ch Chamberlain has gone down in history as someone who decided not to wage war against uh, Germany and rather look the other way and in opposition to someone like Winston Churchill who took on, who realized that fascism is going to destroy Europe, fascism is going to destroy the world, Nazism is poisonous. But so if you do business with poison, it will poison. The contagion will spread everywhere. Talibanization will spread everywhere. I have seen extremist movements. I've studied them for uh, extremist movements over a hundred years of extremist movements. I have studied them. They can never compromise even when they come to power because then they'll lose the support of the core base. Okay. Anyone okay. who had imagined that Taliban 2.0 will be different, was living in a different paradise or was had a completely lack of an understanding of real history. I'm sorry to say that. Uh, Ambassador Kaju, here's the point. Obviously, this is an issue that triggers very deeply felt emotions. You ask us to leave emotion out of it, but Amitabh explained at length. He lost a friend uh, in Kabul. He's, he's lost people along the way that he knows. I'm sure so have you. Would you at least concede that there is no Taliban 2.0? I think the very least we need to do to have this conversation is to acknowledge that everybody who suggested a more moderate, a more inclusive, a, a, an altered by Doha uh, Taliban was wrong. Let's, would you acknowledge, would you acknowledge that at least, Ambassador Kaji? Uh, Barkha, there was a direct personal attack on me and my integrity by my good friend Amitabh Mattu. Uh, let me respond to that attack. I'm a little surprised at the attack from a person who was a, an advisor and a, a crucial advisor to a party and to a chief minister who used to advise the Indian state to talk to separatists in Jammu and Kashmir, to talk to people and engage people who were determined to wrest Kash Jammu and Kashmir out of the Union and who were nothing but proxies of Pakistan. Now, I can't find a more glaring example of appeasement than the appeasement of those who wanted to break the, integ the territorial integrity of India. I'm, I, among those separatists are people who have murdered Indian airmen. So I'm a little surprised and I find it extraordinarily rich when Professor Muttu has a selective memory and says that I am, evokes the ghost of Neville Chamberlain at my suggestion of engaging the Taliban, which the government has begun. And he entire please, and he entirely overlooks the role that he and the party of which he was a part supported in Jammu and Kashmir. It's extraordinarily rich and hypocritical. 